Welcome aboard the Bitcoin Express. My name is Chase. Let's get to it. Wi-Fi is the most expensive cryptocurrency by token price with a current price of $23,000. It is not the most valuable and most expensive cryptocurrency. That still belongs to Bitcoin that has the highest market cap. But by token price, it belongs to Wi-Fi. It went from $873 in July all the way up to $35,000 in August. Now with the current price of $23,000 or $23,765. What is this token all about? How did it, in it increase in price by this much? In this video, I'm going to explain to you what Wi-Fi is, how it works, and what are the risks associated with it. So it all starts with Yearn Finance. Yearn Finance is a protocol that acts as a automatic yield farmer or a money robot. It's somewhere where you could put your money and it will find the best return for you. And if you want to know more about yield farming in detail, I made a video on it in the past. I'll leave a link in the description below if you wanna go check that out right now and then come back to this video. But if you wanna stay on this video, all you need to understand for the purpose of this video is that yield farming is a method or a way for someone to find the best annual returns or the best interest rates on their cryptocurrency. So they'll look across different platforms with different cryptocurrencies and they try to find the best interest rate, the best way they could earn money. And this is a very tedious job. It takes a lot of time. You need to stay updated and look at different protocols and look at different prices and move your cryptocurrency around. So it's very tiring. So Yearn Finance is here to make this easy. You just put your money in, you're in finance, and it does all this work for you. So it's definitely a very cool concept, a, a definitely a very cool idea. And it was developed by Andre Cronier. Andre is famous in cryptocurrency or in DeFi for being a yield farming enthusiast. So he developed this protocol and he released it out to the public. And now this is very important to note. This is directly from Andre Cronier's Twitter account. He says in his description, I test in prod or I test in production, meaning he makes things and he releases them out to the wild without really any audits or the same audits that other projects have. And he has a disclaimer. When I build software, I build it for myself. If you do insist on interacting with it, please use caution. There will be bugs. So remember this about Andre. When he develops something, it's not fully audited and it's released out to the public. So he created Yearn Finance and now people want to use it. So Yearn Finance, as I mentioned, it's supposed to be a automatic yield, automatic yield farmer finding the best interest rates so that you don't have to do the work. So the only way this works is if there's liquidity, if there actually is something that they can work with. So this is where the Y fee token comes into play. By providing liquidity to Yearn Finance so that they can go out now and do all of these things we mentioned and seek the best yields, then you need to get some sort of reward. So the reward is the Wi-Fi token. This is a governance token, meaning when you hold this token, you have voting rights. You get to decide how the project works or how it will look in the future. So you can obviously buy Wi-Fi. I'm sure you know that by now if you're on this video, but the real way, the original way to get Wi-Fi was to earn it or to farm it. And there were three ways of doing this. The first method includes depositing a mixture of 98% slash 2% mix of DAI and Wi-Fi into Balancer. The second method is depositing stable coins into Yearn Finance. And the third method is depositing a mix of Wi-Fi and YCRV into Balancer. And this might sound complicated, right? That's exactly how it was designed to be. Andre Cronier did not want the Wi-Fi token to become a speculation token that was trading on exchanges. He wanted it to end up in the hands of people that were yield farming enthusiasts, people that actually understood the space. So by making Wi-Fi available, available through these three methods, he thought that since these are more, I would say, advanced methods of using DeFi, it would end up in the hands of advanced users or people that really would know how to govern the protocol. But of course, it eventually made its way onto exchanges, 
which was not the plan for Andre Cronier. Now you can just go on Uniswap and you can buy Wi-Fi again today, trading at a price of $23,000. Now this is the funny thing. Andre Cronier, the creator of Yearn Finance, the Wi-Fi protocol himself said, quote, we have released Wi-Fi, a completely valueless zero supply token. We reiterate, it has zero financial value. So this is the funny part. This YFE token is not supposed to have any value, yet it reached a price of $35,000 just a couple weeks ago. So the first thing is, how did this happen? Why is it worth so much? So Andre himself said, the markets are irrational. This is how crypto markets are. You say something has no value and boom, everyone thinks it's valuable. And if you say something has all the value in the world, no one wants it. So there's no rational reasoning for this. But the second theory, and this one does make sense, and a lot of people agree with this, is that Wi-Fi grew with no pre-sale, no pre-mine, or no allocation to the founder. Most cryptocurrency projects have some form of advantage to a select few. The founders, the people on the board, there's a pre-mine, pre-sale to accredited investors. But Wi-Fi really grew naturally, just like Bitcoin did. Satoshi Nakamoto created the Bitcoin white paper and he released it out to the public and anyone can join. No pre-mine, no pre-sale. So similar thing happening here with Wi-Fi and you're in finance. And this really is very rare in the crypto space. Even Ethereum, which is the second most valuable cryptocurrency, had a pre-mine in 2014. So it takes away that fully decentralized decentralization feature that Bitcoin has and now what possibly your finance has. So this is something that people find value in. But this is the thing. Now, a lot of people holding the token, they're not even helping to govern the protocol. Remember, the whole point of this token was for people to hold it so that they can govern the protocol and decide on its future. But now you have all these people who don't really even know what the protocol is holding the token. So Andre himself said it probably will get to a point one day where the price would have to go low enough that speculators no longer want to hold it, but instead only the people that truly care about the project will want to hold it. Again, this is what he said, but of course markets are irrational. Who knows how high this coin price can go or who knows how low who, or who knows how low it will go. So these are the risks now with a project like Yearn Finance. So with any smart contract, there's always a risk. If there's one line of code that is a mistake or a bug, everything could crash. But with Yearn Finance, there's a problem of composability. This is the problem where every time you add a new feature or a new Lego block, a new Lego piece to the protocol, it becomes riskier and riskier. So with your in finance, it's working across multiple platforms, finding the best yield. Every time you add a new smart contract, a new protocol, you are increasing the risk. All it takes is for one of these protocols, one line of code, one bug, and the whole thing can crash. So it's similar to maybe having a car, a beautiful car. Everything is perfect. The paint, the windows, the wheels, everything. But all of a sudden, one wheel pops. The rest of the car is still perfect, but if one wheel pops, you can't drive the car, it doesn't work. So these are the more risky ways of getting yield, right? So if you go to the website defiscore.io, it shows you the risk scores of these protocols, the individual protocols. So Compound, which is a very popular place to earn interest on your cryptocurrency, has very high rankings. So meaning that it, it is relatively safe. But again, as you start adding Compound and all these other protocols, you're increasing the risk. Don't forget that crypto rates are amazing. We are comparing you know, these crypto rates to each other and we're saying 5%, 8%, 10%. You know, that's not high enough. I wanna jump into something like you're in finance and earn 100%, 200%. Remember that in traditional markets, in modern, modern banking, the average interest rate on a savings account is 0.06%, which is essentially nothing. 
So just going on to a protocol like Compound, which I just showed you has a high score of being safe, you can earn 3% on DAI, you can earn 6% on that. Of course, these rates change, it depends on supply and demand, but without getting greedy, a person in crypto can st still earn high rewards just by using these safer protocols. Now, urine finance is by no means a scam. It is a definitely a very cool project and it's doing something that people find valuable. The only problem is, as Andre said, he tests in production. There are not many audits. All it takes is for one mistake and the whole thing could crash. Now, the second risk, huge risk of really all of these protocols, not just here in finance, but all of these other lending and borrowing protocols, is that if the price of the underlying assets that are being lent out and borrowed, if the price of that asset crashes, the whole thing can fall apart. We saw earlier, just a few months ago, on Black Thursday, the price of Ethereum crashed from $194 to $90 in just 24 hours. And the reason this is a problem is because all of these smart contracts, all of these protocols are supported by Ethereum. And if Ethereum crashes, then everything goes down the drain. DAI is a stable coin that is used in a lot of these smart contracts for borrowing and lending. DAI is a decentralized stable coin, but DAI is supported by Ethereum. So if DAI is supported by Ethereum and Ethereum crashes, then that means DAI crashes. That means the whole system crashes. So these are some of the risks of using these platforms, especially something like Urine Finance, which has so many different parts to it. It is possible you can lose your money overnight. So for anyone thinking about using these protocols, it's up to you. Do you want to put in your life savings or just money that you are okay losing? And then the last thing I want to speak about is the craze about all of these projects. We see all of these farming projects, high yields, and everyone is going crazy. There's some, something interesting about people wanting to make similar projects and giving them names of food. So one we saw recently was sushi. You can farm sushi, same thing, high return, high, high, high interest rates. And because this was concentrated, the control by one person, the creator, an anonymous creator of this protocol, he dumped over, 50, he, he dumped his sushi $10 million, $10 million worth for Ethereum and it crashed the price of sushi. And this is what the sushi protocol looks like. Again, it's a way where you provide liquidity, you can farm and earn sushi. And we saw in this case, it didn't turn out well. And it's a huge craze. Everyone is jumping on board, trying to do the same thing. This is Pearl.Finance, which is something similar to sushi swap. It even looks the same. Look how these websites look compared to each other. Same thing. You, you provide liquidity to the pool. This is built on the Tron network. You can start earning Pearl token. So this is something nice about the YFE token. We know that the power is not concentrated in one person or in Andre Crony, the creator, but instead it's really decentralized. It's really distributed. And again, this is maybe one of the reasons why people find the YFE token so valuable. Again, no one really knows. It is a bit irrational with these markets. And like I said, there are so many of these projects, just food names, throwing out these projects. Another one is Yam Finance. Again, you can farm Yam, but after this protocol was released, there was a bug and the price crashed to zero. Then we also have Hot Dog. I mean, this, this is just a joke now. You have all these protocols of names, of farming, of these high interest rates, very risky space. So there was a coin, you know, Hot Dog, and it, it dumped 99.9% .9 just hours after launch. So of course, this space of yield farming, it's young, it's new, it probably will get safer over the years. But in the very beginning, when there is super high risk, of course, there is going to be super high rewards, if done right. But I wanted to make you aware of all of this and how it works and the risks associated so that you are not the one being burned. I hope that you found value in this video. If you liked it, go down below, subscribe, leave a comment. Thank you for listening and I'll see you next time.